Well, if you know me in person, you know that besides software, I do also have a good experience in hardware. So I decided to share some information and passion with you, and I will start with the most requested question I get, which is, I have an old PC or I've just bought this lower end laptop and it's very slow in rendering. Would alarm upgrade make my computer render 3D scenes faster? Good question, since upgrading the RAM is the easiest thing to do for any laptop or desktop. I have a desktop with 64 gigs of RAM, so I decided to test this theory. Before I start preparing for this video, I was confident that if your existing RAM could handle the 3D scene that you are working on it, so adding more RAM will not affect the rendering speed. But when I tested that, I got an interesting results. I repeated the test again and again and got the same results. So in this video, I'm going to share all the data that I have collected and some advices for upgrading your hardware in general. Hey, what's up guys? Hope you are all doing well. If you are new here, I do videos about architecture design and visualization. So if you are interested, consider subscribing and turn on the bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, so as a general advice about choosing your PC in the first place, whether you are buying a laptop or a desktop, my number one advice is don't go cheap with your PC, especially if you have the ability to buy a good one. Investing in your hardware as an architect or a 3D artist can give you a significant boost in your productivity and save you a lot of time. If you are a beginner and you don't have the enough experience to choose the suitable hardware for 3D rendering, I made a list with all the best laptops and desktop parts to buy right now with different price ranges and I will keep updating the list from time to time. So keep checking it if you want to upgrade your hardware. Of course, if you have any questions about choosing your next PC, don't hesitate to ask me in the comments down below. I read all the comments and I will help you. Now let's focus on the topic of this video which is the RAM test. This is my system that I am using for this test. As you can see, for the CPU I have AMD Threadripper 2950X overclocked to 4.15 GHz. For the RAM, I have 4 modules with 16 gigs each, which means total amount of 64 gigabytes of RAM. So the test will go like this. Firstly, I will run some CPU benchmarks such as Cinebench R15 and VRA benchmark. If you don't know what this VRA benchmark is, I've already done a video about it and you can check it from the card above or from the link in the video description. After that, we will use VRA render engine to render an interior and exterior scenes in both bucket and progressive mode and we will see the rendering time for each one of them. We will repeat the test 3 times, one with 4 stick of RAM with total amount of 64 gigs, then with 2 sticks of RAM with total amount of 32 gigs, finally with only 1 stick of RAM with 16 gigabyte. I don't recommend you to use lower than that, if you have only 8 gigabyte of RAM in your system that's not enough for any 3D scene and you should definitely upgrade your RAM. In the end, we will compare all the results and charts and make final conclusions. Ok, let's start. Keep in mind that I already done all the benchmarking and rendering without the screen recording to get accurate results. So I will just share the final scores right away. Firstly, we will see the benchmarking scores. For Cinebench R15, I got these results. The highest score done by using 4 RAM sticks with total amount of 64 gigabytes, achieving 3410 points, way ahead from the second score done by using only 2 sticks of RAM with total amount of 32 gigabytes and followed by the 1 stick only with 16 gigabytes of RAM. So the myth is finally becoming true, right? The more RAM I added, the higher benchmarking score I got. Let's check out VRA benchmark results. Using 64 gigs of RAM, I got 22,000 score and followed by using 32 gigabytes. The score using only 16 gigabytes was shocking to me since it cut down the performance up to half. It's like running the CPU with only using 50% of the cores. So here again, using more RAM delivers more performance. But let's check out a real example with seeing the true RAM usage. Here I have an exterior scene. This one is from Motion. I rendered it using VRA Next and tried different rendering modes. The progressive mode and the bucket mode. With the same noise threshold being 0.1. And as you can see, 
the one with the high alarm finished first and the ones done with the progressive mode finished a little bit faster than the bucket mode let's see the alarm usage in this chart we can see that our exterior scene required a little bit above 14 gigabytes to load so one LAM stick with 16 GB is enough to load it and this should not be the reason to slow down our render. Let's see our interior scene test results. Here is our interior scene. It's also from Evolmotion. As we can see in this chart, the one with the more LAM size finished first. And also the ones rendered with the progressive mode finished a little bit faster. But this time the one with the 16 GB of LAM took a lot of time to finish it. and that's because our interior scene required about 25 gigabytes of RAMs to load and that's way above the capacity of one alarm stick with only 16 gigabytes so what happened when your scene required more RAM than you have your computer start to send the rest of the data to your main drive and use it as a RAM replacement and because your main drive is very slow to read and write data compared to your RAM that will make the render took more time even if you are using ultra fast ssd as your main drive it's still very very slow compared to any normal ram in my case i use samsung 970 pro m.2 ssd and you have seen the result it's still very very slow compared to any ram stick so as conclusion what makes the rendering with more ram sticks faster this is not because the size of the ram itself but because of something called memory channels we have single channel, dual channel and quad channel but what exactly do these things mean and more importantly how to get the best configuration to have faster rendering speed in most cases the type of configuration you have will depend on how many RAM sticks you have if your motherboard have only a single RAM slot then your PC has single channel configuration if you got two RAM slots, that's a dual channel configuration, which is what most laptops have. And if all four RAM slots are occupied, you must be running a quad RAM configuration. And always check your motherboard manual to install the RAM sticks correctly to activate the channels. So as my advice, if you are buying a new PC, whether it's a desktop or a laptop, for the RAM size itself, 32 GB would be the sweet spot. 16 GB is the minimum and 64 is a little bit overkill. Try to populate all the RAM slots and use the dual or quad channel. If you are buying a laptop then you have only two RAM slots. Make sure to populate them and I recommended you to use 2 by 16 GB so total RAM amount of 32 GB. For desktop use 4 by 8 GB with total amount of 32 GB or 4 6 by 16 GB with total amount of 64 GB if you are working with large projects or using multiple programs at the same time also in V-Ray render setup choosing the progressive rendering mode will give you some performance boost to read more about the RAM channels check out the resources that I will attach in the video description and as I said in the beginning of this video to help you choose the right hardware for you you can check the Amazon list that I have made for you so you can choose any laptop or desktop parts that suits your budget and I will keep upgrading the list from time to time and by that we have reached to the end of this video I hope you have learned something new from it and find it helpful if you do smash the like button share it with your friends and subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming videos comment down below if you have any other topic to cover that's it for this video see you in the next one take care bye bye